In this video, we review Azure DNS Resolver and Outbound Endpoints. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Raldos. My last video went over Azure DNS Private Resolvers with Inbound Endpoints. Inbound Endpoints are used to resolve the host name of Azure resources from on-premises or even in Azure if using custom DNS servers such as Windows AD DNS. This video goes over Outbound Endpoints resolving on-premises DNS host names from Azure. Before we begin, please like and subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. That helps get the word out about this channel. Thanks to those who have become members, your support is appreciated. I have a bunch of courses now available on Udemy and sign up for my newsletter and you'll receive a free guide to getting started with a home lab in Azure. Check for the links below. Back to it, let's recap what a private resolver is. An Azure DNS private resolver is an Azure PaaS service that lets us query Azure private DNS zones from an on-premises environment. And it also allows us to query on-premises DNS from Azure. It's a way of bridging the gap between on-prem and Azure name resolution. Check out the last video for a more detailed explanation. A private resolver works in two directions using endpoints. An outbound endpoint allows us to forward DNS requests to other servers authoritative for a specific domain. For example, we may have a DNS zone in Windows AD DNS called SeraltosTest.com, and we want our Azure clients to be able to resolve SeraltosTest.com host names without using custom DNS servers in Azure. We could use an outbound endpoint to forward any incoming requests for SeraltosTest.com to our Windows DNS server that's authoritative for that domain. We'll go over a similar setup in the demo. To understand outbound endpoints, it's helpful to know the flow of a DNS lookup in Azure. Let's start with a client DNS query in Azure. If the VNet is set to custom DNS, the query goes to the custom DNS servers for resolution. If DNS is left to default, any private DNS zone linked to the VNet are consulted and resolved if the private zone is authoritative for the domain. If there's no match with a private DNS zone, then the DNS forwarding rule set is checked. This is the step we're setting up in this video. A forwarding rule set is bound to an outbound endpoint for name resolution. If a domain in the rule set matches, the request is sent to the remote DNS server. If there's no match, Azure Public DNS is used to resolve the query. Let's go over the lab used in the upcoming demo. The demo is a continuation of where the last video left off. We have two VNets, one is for Azure-based resources, and the other one represents an on-premises environment. On-premises is in Azure to save me some time setting up the lab, but the principles are the same. These two VNets are connected by VNet peering, but this connection would be express route or a VPN connection if it were on-prem. The point is we need connectivity over a private network. We are resolving names for a private internal network after all. We have a DNS server in our on-premises network with the zone seraltostest.com. We have a server in our Azure subnet and an Azure DNS private resolver that we configured in the last video. The VNet has two slash 28 subnets. We used one for the inbound endpoint. We'll use the other for the outbound endpoint. Each endpoint needs its own slash 28 or larger subnet. We're going to configure this environment so the servers in Azure can resolve our on-premises DNS names through the private resolver and forwarding rules. Let's get started in the lab. Let's start from the computer in Azure. We're going to see the default behavior first. Let's open the command prompt. We'll run nslookup for the on-premises server, prvmonprem.seraltostest.com. It fails because it can't find the domain. Let's run it again, but this time we'll specify the internal DNS server that is authoritative for the seraltostest.com domain. Now we get an IP address. Also, we could try to ping the server, and it can't find the host, so that fails as well. Let's fix that. We'll start by adding the outbound endpoint. Let's go to the DNS private resolver in the Azure portal. Here we are in private resolvers. We'll open up our private resolver. As mentioned earlier, this was created in a previous video. Check that out if you need more details on setting up Azure DNS private resolvers. Let's go to the outbound endpoints. We'll add an endpoint, give it a name, CIR outbound DNS for this example, select the subnet or create a new one if needed. Notice the inbound DNS subnet has already been taken. Each endpoint requires its own subnet. 
Also, notice the message at the top indicating the subnets can't overlap with the IP ranges on the screen. We'll select our subnet, outbound DNS for this example. We'll add tags as needed and save. Let's give that a minute to finish. We refresh and now we can see our outbound endpoint. Now that we have the outbound endpoint, we need a forwarding rule set. Let's search for DNS forwarding rule set. There it is. We'll go to DNS forwarding rule sets, create a new rule set. The rules are similar to conditional forwarders in Windows DNS. Select a subscription and the resource group or create a new one if needed. Give it a name, PIR DNS rule set for this example. Set the region. It has to be the same region as our private resolver, South Central US for this example. Select the private resolver. And if you don't see it, make sure your regions are correct. And we'll select the outbound endpoint we just created. Go to rules. We'll add a rule. This rule is for the seraltostest.com domain. Add a name, Seraltos test for this example. The domain name is the DNS name we're trying to resolve seraltostest.com for this example. Make sure to add a dot at the end. We'll leave the rule enabled. Now we have to define a destination IP address. This rule states that if any request for host names in seraltostest.com come in, the request is forwarded to the IP address of the authoritative DNS server. For this example, that's 172.17.0.4. That's the DNS server for our on-prem network. We can't change the port, so port 53, the DNS port, has to be accessible. I know the port's available because we tested it with NSLOOKUP in a previous step. Once everything looks good, add the rule. You can add up to a thousand rules in a rule set. We only need one. Next, go to Virtual Networks. We're going to link this rule set to a virtual network. We can connect multiple rule sets, but they have to be in the same region as the rule and the private resolver. Click Add. Make sure the subscription and the resource group is selected. This is the resource group of the virtual network we're linking to. Now we'll select the virtual network. PRVNet1 represents the Azure network for this example. We can leave the name as is and click add. Add tags as needed and go to review and create. Once validation passes, click create. This will take some time. I'll pause here until it finishes. That finished, let's go to the resource. From here, we can view and modify the rules. We can view and modify the network links to the rule set. You can also view the outbound endpoint the rule set is associated with. Let's go back to our Azure DNS private resolver. Go to the outbound endpoints. Now it shows the associated rule set as well as the subnet the outbound endpoint is connected to. Before we go back to the server and finish testing, let's look at the VNet settings for the Azure side. So we're on PR VNet 1. Let's go to DNS servers. I just want to point out we're using the default Azure DNS servers. Now let's go back to that Azure server. Now for the moment of truth. Let's run NSLOOKUP for the on-premises host, prvmonprem.seraltostest.com. It's using the wire server IP address for DNS lookups and returning the correct response from the on-prem server. That means it's working correctly. Let's try to ping the server again. It was able to resolve the host name to an IP address and we're getting a response. I did have to allow ICMP or ping requests in the Windows firewall on the other computer for this to work. That's great. We can now resolve our on-premises Windows DNS host names from Azure. I hope this helps you better understand Azure Private DNS Resolver. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.